Hello there once again fellow flight simmers and cockpit builders. I'm back with the second part to the video I uh, released the other day about using custom assignments with SimBoom cockpit. And once again this is valid for version 0.9.58 as of time of this recording. But of course it may continue to work you know, well into the future until something changes as it inevitably does. So anyways, we're here in our little airfoil lab Cessna 172 once again, and we're going to be trying to assign, I think I chose five uh, custom data reps that don't work by default with this aircraft. And we're going to go through the process of, go, of uh, assigning each one of them and seeing if they work. And if they don't, we're going to go ahead and change them so that they do work. All right. So one of the things I wanted to mention and I forgot to mention it on the last video about custom commands is that one of the tools that we recommend that to use in order to figure out the data refs is a data ref tool and I'm sure many of you guys have already used it and if you haven't I'll try to remember to post the link down below but basically you'll see it and use during this video here okay before I forget we're going to be working once again with my test panel that I created specifically to be testing stuff out and be changing you know the data file constantly that way I'm not messing around with my real setup and we're going to basically decide which ones are the ones we're going to do and I have already done this ahead of time that way I uh, chose some of the commands some of the buttons and switches and everything that are not working by default so that we would have to do custom assignments on those. One of the ones that is not working um, is the airspeed uh, calibration knob here on the airspeed indicator. All right, so we're going to go ahead and assign that one there. And then the, also the, the one to adjust your attitude indicator here to center it. We're going to assign that one there. And we're going to do uh, the alternate air static valve which, but it's this one right here okay and then we're gonna do the engine mixture which uh, right now the one that's controlling it is my Satec throttle quadrant and then the last one we're gonna do is a fuel tank selector uh, down here at the bottom alright so we'll assign the appropriate um, components for each one of those so Okay, so we'll go back to our configurator here. And the first thing we need to do is we need to assign the multiplexer board where I have all these things connected to. So that's going to be number 38. So we'll go to number 38. And we're going to add a multiplexer here. All right, so now that it's added, we can go ahead and start adding our, our thing. So, all right, since I'm already on this page right here, why don't we go ahead and add the alternate static valve here and that's going to be a toggle switch that's on 3815 and then we're going to select the fuel tank selector switch we're going to go ahead and put that one on 38.9 I believe we have 9 and 10 is our on off on toggle switch alright the next one we're going to do is going to be the mixture so I have my potentiometer on A0 so I'll just go ahead and put it in there alright so now we go to the the instruments and we're gonna go to the big six here and uh, we're gonna do the I guess we'll start off with uh, the air airspeed calibration knob and we're gonna use an encoder on it and we're gonna put that on 3812 because that's where we have it and I think that's it for now so We'll go ahead and save it, replacing the same data file that we had before. And now we can go back to our simulator and we need to open the status. And we're going to open also the input options here. All right, so for this, um, basically, we're going to try now that we, we save the configuration file we're gonna reload the configuration so that everything is um, already loaded up so the first one we're gonna try is gonna be the the airspeed calibration alright so I'm gonna move the encoder and you can see that it is responding up here 
but there's nothing happening on the instrument it's not moving at all and if I move the actual knob you know it does move alright so the next one we're gonna try is we're gonna try let's try the fuel selector the fuel selector switch so we're gonna throw that and it's not doing anything but you can see up here that it did detect that I moved that switch alright the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna do the alternate static this one right here which is this toggle switch right here so we move it and there's nothing happening but it does detect that we move that we flipped it alright and the last one we're gonna try is the mixture so right now like I said the SATIC throttle quadrant is controlling the mixture but if I move my potentiometer nothing happens even though it says that I did move it so we need to find out what all these things um, are assigned you know that way we can get them to work so we're gonna go ahead and open up the data ref tool and we're gonna look at data refs because this video is about data refs correct so alright um, one of the things that you can do also and I, f I forgot to mention this earlier I'm gonna go back to my other screen here <coughs> okay so if you go into your explain folder and you go into wherever you have it installed and you go into the output folder and then you go to preferences every time you run the simulator the data ref tool if you already have it obviously installed is gonna save these two files right here one is the DRT last run commands revs dot text and the other one is the DRT last run data revs dot text so obviously one of them is the data reps and one of them is the commands so if you ever want to see for example the commands for this particular aircraft that you last ran uh, it'll give you all the data reps that were ran while this airplane was loaded and there are very 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 many of them and you probably won't need 95% of them or 99% of them maybe but there is tons as you can see right here it was 2473 but you don't need most of them the good thing is that for example for this airplane you can see that almost all the ones that we care about are gonna start with 172 and um, one day when I was trying to work with a flight J sim Boeing 727 all of them started with FJS so sometimes you'll find some some common you know beginning that all the data reps that really matter on this airplane are gonna be saved under alright so but right now we don't care about commands we care about data refs so we'll open up that one and once again you can see that all the first ones you know they start with 172 and you can probably I'm not even gonna do that because it might take forever but if we go down the list um, we get to the end right here so it's 455 of them that start with 172 and a lot of them you don't care about because you'll never get to use them and a lot of them are not writable so you won't be able to change them anyways but you do have to find the ones that matter um, so in order to make it easier right now when we start looking at looking for the data refs we're gonna basically use you know a little trick on the data ref tool to make it easier to find the ones that we're looking for close that up right here go back to the simulator and we're gonna look at the data ref tool now so so basically um, if you try to basically let's say you move something in the airplane here so right now I'm using I'm moving the airspeed calibration knob here and if you try to look for the command that got triggered you know good luck finding it because like I said there's many many data refs in here so you're gonna have to be able to look through all of these in order to find it the good thing that I found out over the years or the last year or so is that if you go to the very top usually the ones that you're looking for are usually going to be along there especially in this one because they start with 172 and I'm not sure if they're listed alphabetically but it makes it a lot easier so now in order to find the ones that we care about now why don't we just put if you put change right here you highlight change with capital CH and then you put 172 it narrows it down to only the last ones that that have been changing or that are changing that contain those letters or words that you put down there 
so now when we move it here you can see that I can't even find it <laughs> okay right there so that's the one that's changing um, when you move it so you can see that oops I'm blocking it you can see that the number right there is changing so 30 35 32 and then if you go all the way you know to one end you're gonna have to find the values so if I go all the way to this end which is already uh, the stop uh, you can see that right now is at zero and then you have to go all the way to the top so I think it's probably easier if I just hold it down like this alright so now I go all the way to the top and you can see that it's 100 now okay so the so the range is from 0 to 100 and then you also need to find out how much it changes every time you turn it so if you turn one little click only you can see that it changes about 0.25 every time so right there it went the problem is I can't put the highlight on it or else it, you won't see it change but see it was 98.75 and then I changed it again and now it's 98.5 and then if I change it one more time is 98.25 so basically it's changing 0.25 every time so that's what you need to know you need to know the beginning value the ending value and how much it changes every time alright so alright so we located that one so why don't we go ahead and go back to the Simbim website and we're going to open up a second window because we're gonna need to go to the personal conversion tool all right so we go to custom right here <clears throat> and then we go down to custom conversion community section here but we're gonna use the personal converter which is right here all right so we're gonna start a new conversion so there's gonna be basically I'm gonna pretend like I don't even have a conversion because I already do but I'm gonna start fresh so you start with new conversion and it says upload your data config file to start creating a new one so you click OK and it should open up the window where you can choose your data file but apparently this time it didn't want to do that so I'm gonna hit it again and this time it did so I choose my data configuration file that I'm using for this air, for this uh, airplane for the simulator itself actually and as you can see it has all the ones that you can change down here and all the ones that you can't up here so there are certain ones that are not allowed to be changed and that really comes into play with some data refs because we do need you to change them because they don't work as expected but we can change them I already talked about that on the other video too so anyways so you, we're going to select, um, for now, we're going to select only the airspeed one because that's the one we're working with right now. And I'm going to go through this over and over again just so you can get the repetition and hopefully it'll stick better what the steps are to do this. So you go ahead and select the one you want and then you confirm. And we're going to make a name for this one since it's supposedly a brand new one. So I'm just going to call it AFL underscore C172 for airfoil labs Cessna 172 and we click OK so now it shows up here and it shows that we have basically not assigned anything to it so we click on it here and we are doing a data ref so we're gonna put the data ref that we found out in here and it was 172 slash instruments slash KIAS underscore TAS underscore slip and the writing is very very important because if you if you put a capital where there shouldn't be a capital or if you put a lowercase where there should be a capital it will not work the spelling has to be exactly the same so I suppose that if you really wanted to make sure that you you know you get it right um, one of the things you can actually do is go to that DRT 
folder the the file I mean and look for look for that so if we look for 172 instruments and then we're gonna look for here it is right here instruments KIAS TAS slip so we can go ahead and just you know copy that one and then when you go back to the page over here you can just go ahead and paste it and that guarantees that you're not gonna make a misspelling there so remember um, you you remember that you had to get the incremental value so for this one it was 0.25 as we saw and the limits maximum and minimum have to be comma separated so it was uh, 0 comma 100 because that was the minimum and maximum values so once you have everything in there you go ahead and confirm the changes and you can save it and download it and this one you have to save in your airplane folder so wherever you have that airplane that you're flying at the moment you have to go to that folder and you're gonna save it in the root of that airplane folder and just go ahead and leave the name in the way it wants to save it alright so now we come back to the simulator and we can reload the configuration and now looking at our instrument that we're playing with here we can go ahead and and move the encoder and you can see that it's moving and if you look at the number here which is uh, this number right here I'm gonna just leave the the mouse on it right there you can see that the value is changing as we move the the encoder there alright so we got that one working so now we're gonna go ahead and move on and we're gonna do the the attitude indicator thing here so in order to do that one we have to find the data ref of course because right now it wasn't working but since we don't have anything assigned to this one right now we have to go back to the configurator again oops and we're going to assign where we had this one we're gonna assign this one now the AA AH pitch ref which is artificial horizon pitch ref so we'll go ahead and put that one on the same place where we had the true airspeed calibration knob and we're gonna replace it and we're gonna save it and remember this one goes into your simulator folder and that's plugins alright so now that we got that saved we can go ahead and go back to the simulator and we're going to reload the configuration file so now when we move the encoder you can see that it does show up as AH pitch ref but the instrument is not doing anything alright now if we go if we go just to the we're gonna refresh here so we get you know start fresh again okay so now if we go to the instrument here and we move it around a little bit we can see that the one that popped up is this one here called 172 slash instruments slash H A H underscore pointer and that's it so we have to figure out what the value is of the range and the step so we basically go back all the way down to the bottom here sometimes it's easier just to hold it down so that's the bottom and it's a negative one right here and now we go all the way to the top well, that takes a while even holding it alright and that's a one so the range is negative one to one and every time you move it just a little bit so you see it was 0 0.99 0 0.98 0 0.97 so it's actually 0 0.01 every time you move the knob just one click alright so that's the information that we're gonna need now that we go back over here so we're gonna go back to where we're doing the conversion and I've noticed that every time you want to continue this you need to load it again or sometimes it, things won't load correctly at least in my, in my experience so every time I come back I always refresh the converter and then I load a conversion which is gonna be the file in the aircraft folder I really need to make myself shortcuts for this and the uh, file remember it was simvim if AFL C172 so we go ahead and open it and we only have that one assignment so we wanna add more parameters to it so we go ahead and click 
and go to the the data file that we're working with here alright so now you can see that we have the AH pitch reference here so we go ahead and select that one and confirm now that it's there we can go ahead and put our custom data ref now if we want to do it the easy way once again I'm not sure why I keep closing it but we can go back to the last run data refs and look for that one which was 172 instruments AH pointer which is this one so I'll just go ahead and cheat and I'll copy it then go back over here and paste it alright and the increment value remember it was 0 0.01 for this one so decimal 0 01 and the limit values were negative 1 comma 1 and remember they have to be comma separated so once you have them both go ahead and confirm the changes save it and download it again and you're gonna have to go to where you have the aircraft again that's what I mean it was so much easier before the way to do this you know to add a uh, custom data ref for command so yes you do want to replace the one that was there and now we go back to the simulator again we can reload the configuration and looking at our instrument here let's move the encoder oh look at that it's moving and you see how much faster you can move it than then if you just try to click on it with the mouse this one moves so slow even if I use the wheel on the mouse the scroll wheel it's very slow but with this one here because of that acceleration you can actually move it pretty quick alright so we got two of them working uh, what's next I believe we were gonna do the alternate static valve next so we'll change the views here and I'm gonna go ahead and look at it here so the alternate static valve was this toggle switch here so I'm gonna go ahead and throw it oh my god it's not working what do you know but it does show that we moved it like I said earlier so we need to put a custom data ref for that one too so let's go ahead and go back to the configurator hopefully you guys won't get dizzy going back and forth so much alright so once again we go to the converter the personal converter we refresh it again and we load the conversion which is gonna be the same one again that it's in the aircraft file Oops. alright so where is it at there it is I almost lost it so as you can see it retains the two that we already put in so we need to add parameters so every time you add assignments to your data file you can come back and it just add the ones that are not there so alright I know I said I was gonna go do this back and forth back and forth but this is gonna be an extremely long video if I do that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and add all the ones that we're gonna change now and we'll just keep coming back to edit them one at a time but I'm gonna add them all now so we got the alternate static valve we're gonna do the engine mixture and we're gonna do the fuel tank selector we're not gonna do the fuel tank level and the generator one off bus uh, it's, it allows me to change those but we don't need to for the purposes of this video so I'll go ahead and confirm alright and now we can edit those three so we're gonna do the alternate static valve right now and we're gonna basically do find out what it is that we need to put in there so let's go back to the simulator here we're gonna refresh the database list here or the data ref list I mean and we're gonna go ahead and move this so we can see what what it is that it's doing so so there it is it's 172 panel actuators static air zero so that's when it's off and when it's or that yeah I guess that's when it's off when it's on it's uh, the same thing but with a one so this one only has two values zero zero or one so that's all we need to know so 172 panel actuator static air so we'll go ahead and look for that one over here which once again 
it's there so 172 panel actuators and then it's going to be static air V I'm going to go ahead and copy it and we're going to paste it in here all right so remember this and for some reason it knows that this this only has on and off values so we can go ahead and just put 0 comma 1 and confirm the changes and save it replace the one that you already saved okay we go back to the simulator again reload the configuration every single time and now let's go ahead and throw our switch here and see if it works wow magic it works now let's say for example you see how right now I have the switch down and when I push it up it actually comes out so let's say I wanted to do it so that when I push it up it goes in and when I push it out it comes out so what we can do is go back to the configurator here and we can select that particular parameter there and we can switch the order of these so we can just put one comma zero so that the one is first and then confirm the changes save it and download it and replace it again and then we go back to our simulator reload the configuration and uh, now you can see that as soon as I reloaded the configuration it, it came out because I was uh, on the bottom here so now when I go up the switch goes in so that feels a little bit more natural instead of you know being backwards so there you go alright um, well I suppose we could do the the engine mixture next so right now if I move the potentiometer it doesn't do anything like everything else but we see that it does detect that I moved it alright so we're gonna go ahead and go back to the configurator and we're gonna select the engine mixture Oh yeah, but we need to find out what it is, right? So I'm going to go back to the simulator and I'll go ahead and clear up the the, the custom data ref tool here and we're going to move the mixture a little bit here. So there, I seen it move, I seen it move. It was this one right here. So 172 engine mixture ratio and uh, the last number ratio 0 okay so for this one here we're gonna have to find out what the minimum and maximum values are well you know what let me go ahead and pull it all the way out so the ratio right now is zero and if we push it all the way in the ratio is one so it's either zero and to one alright so we'll go ahead and go back to the configurator here and I, well, let's look for that file here so it's going to be 172 engine mixture ratio so we'll go to here and here it is so we'll go ahead and copy it paste it in here and remember uh, the range is going to be two values comma separated so it was 0 and 1 and there's still a lot of things I need to learn about this. I, I'm not really sure what the index, if it's a data ref array. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but for now I'm not going to talk about it because I don't want to give you wrong information because then I'll get in trouble again. So go, go ahead and confirm the changes here. Save it again and download it. And go back to the simulator reload the configuration oh I, you can see that it moved already right there so now when we move the potentiometer you can see that it's moving through its range and this is what happens when you get potentiometers that are not a very high quality you see how it's moving around a lot it's twitching so that's what happens um, because it doesn't have I suppose that there might be a way which I haven't really looked into to make them be more stable maybe a capacitor or something I'm not sure but yeah so it has certain positions where it is a little bit more stable but like right there it's already good thankfully you almost never have to lean any more than right about there because if you had to lean farther then you would have that constant twitching but when you put it higher closer to max 
richness um, it's actually pretty steady up there alright so we got another one working there and the last one we're gonna do it was gonna be the fuel selector thing here so if we go to our panel again this is a switch that we have assigned to that and if we move it we can see that nothing changes but it does show that we moved it so we need to go ahead and clean up the data ref tool here and then we'll move it with a mouse and well I can see that we got this 172 panel actuators fuel tank select but there is certain references data refs that you cannot change just by doing this sometimes they only tell you the position of it but you can't change it because if you could change it I could technically I could just put a zero here and you see how it kind of wanted to change but it didn't so that tells me that is not a writable data ref because if you put a zero and you hit enter look at the tank selector switch see it moves but then it's go it goes back to where it was now if I put it to the center it's a zero and let's say I put one it goes back to the center so that is not a writable da data ref which is something else that you want to be aware of um, so the range for this one is going to be negative one when it's over here on the left zero when it's in the middle and one when it's over here okay so then you ask how do you change one that you can't change the data ref on luckily for us there is a also this one has commands so when we move this you can see that it has 172 slash com underscore fuel underscore tank underscore left and then the same one but right so when we click it with a mouse it's using both of those commands and it's changing the data ref so we have to use both of them for this one and f you'll see when we get to the configurator over here that it actually gives us the spaces to put that so when we go to the fuel tank selector this one has a lot more options it's not just data ref now we got three commands we got up and down commands we have a toggle command and we have data ref so obviously for this one even though it's not an up and down command it's a left and right command but the the idea is the same so this is what the one we have to use so in order to look for those we have to go back to the data ref tool but we're gonna look at the commands this time so that one was 172 com fuel so com fuel here they are so here's the two of them that we need so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the right one and then we're going to put that one in one of the boxes here and then we'll just paste it again and then just change it to left all right and like I said you know when you're copying and pasting you don't have to worry that you misspelled something or that you didn't uh, capitalize something that was capitalized all right so now we need to look for the the data ref too so if we go back to the simulator again because we are on the commands right now so we'll go back to the data refs and we'll move that switch again and we can see that is 172 panel actuators fuel tank select so we'll go back over here and go back to the data refs and look for 172 panel oh, panel actuators and then we got fuel tank select so it's right here we'll go ahead and copy it bring it over here and paste it and so right here you know it's asking for a data ref index number and I don't know exactly I think I tried it putting one and it worked because it goes from negative one zero and one but I think I also pressed put it without putting anything in there and it still worked that's why I need to figure out more what the data ref index exactly does or mean and the center position does matter so that one remember it was zero in the center so we'll go ahead and confirm the changes save and download it replace the file and once again we'll go back to our simulator 
reload the configuration file. Oh, you saw it move right away. All right, so now we have our switch here and it's making it move. Well, what do you know? All right, so if, if I would have got that wrong, if I would have put, you know, on the top, I think I put right and on the bottom I put left. If I would have got that wrong and I would have put them, you know, left on the top and right on the bottom, then it just would have been reversed. You know, when I came this way, it would have gone to the left. And when I came this way, it would have gone to the right. But all you have to do is go back over there and, you know, switch it. And that's it. All right, so we got all of them working now. So you, you got to see a lot of different types of data refs and, you know, the numbers that you have to look for in the data reference tool. But I'm going to go show you one more time on the configurator. And I keep calling it the configurator. This is the personal conversion tool. All right, so if we go back to look at the ones we have put in here already, you can see that we have um, a ASI TAS knob and you can go back and you can check the values that you put in there and you can do that for all of them basically you can just go back and review them all now if you decide that you made a mistake or you don't want a certain one in here like for example if I want to keep using my SATIC panel for the mixture and I don't want that potentiometer to be always you know causing jitters I can just go ahead and delete it and then go ahead and save and download it again Okay, and now when I go back to the simulator here, if I reload the configuration, now if I move my potentiometer, it doesn't do anything anymore because it's gone. All right. So yeah, that's pretty much the way you do data reps. And it's not as hard as it seems. You know, you just have to kind of know the steps. Uh, the important thing to remember is that the data reps that you're working with have to be writable. If they're not writable, there's no way you can you can do this. I think there is a way if you know how to use you know the language of um, Fly with Lua and all that you can create writable data reps. I definitely don't know how to do that, so I'm not even going to get into it. And um, like I said, you need to make sure the spelling is correct, and that's pretty much it. You can um, you know pretty much make your cockpit do whatever you want it to do. Okay, well, I guess that's it for this video. Another pretty long one. Um, but like I said on the other video, you know, I really recommend that if you guys have any other questions that are way more uh, in-depth or way more complicated than I can answer, go ahead and join the SimVim community on their website. Um, you know, there's a lot of people there that have a ton more experience than I do. And uh, not only that, but, you know, Vlad and Roman themselves can answer some of the questions. And I've noticed, you know, I think I posted one or two in there a while back. And usually within a day or two, you know, they, they answer the questions. All right, well, hopefully this helps a ton of you out there. And uh, this will probably be my last video that I record about Simvin Cockpit unless I can uh, come up with other, you know, basic things that I've worked with. Obviously, like I said before, I haven't worked with... Um, uh, what do you call them, uh, servos, I haven't worked with um, stepper motors or PWM, you know, gauges, so I really can't talk about that because I don't know how to use them. Uh, maybe someday if I do, um, I'll talk about them, but for the moment I won't. <laughs> I only try to talk about things that I think I understand and that I can help others with. All right, but anyways, uh, let's stop making this video longer than it already is and hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.